Z-Pack, this is Alex, this is Peter, this is Yuval, this is David, and welcome to Hack the Year. Uh, before we get started, I want to start off with a demo. I want all of you guys to take out your phone right now and type the number on the screen right here. Just send a text to this number. And uh, we're going to explain what happens when you type that number, but you'll find out the hard way. Uh, <laughs> 347-934-2046. Anyone got it so far? sent to a server that Twilio owns, and they're sending a request to our website. What our website is doing is it's receiving the text message, storing the text message in the database, and then on the front end, like what you see right here, every second we're checking to see what's happening, or it's a, we're checking to see if there are new messages, so that's how your message is showing up automatically without reloading the page. So if I go into the Chrome developer tools, uh, you'll see... <laughs> I swear it's true. <laughs> so when you go into the Chrome developer tools, you're going to see on the bottom <laughs> the number of requests. And you're going to see that every single second it's increasing. And when you guys text... Uh, see, in this request right here... Uh, <laughs> someone with the number 607 texted Dan, that's awesome. And then the request found, got the text message, showed it on the screen, and split it. So, uh, you want to dive into what you're going to cover? You guys can play with it later. Yeah, you guys can go on up later and play with it. Um, I just want to thank you guys for coming. This is like a really awesome turnout since this is our first year doing this. Yeah. Um, so, just, you know, it's awesome that you guys came. Uh, so, what are we here for? We're here to teach you web development. And what that is, is to teach you how to make websites and web applications. And the reason we chose web development is because it's the most open platform for you to use. And because everybody's on the internet every day. So we think it's really cool for you to be able to build your own websites and web applications. And just learn how to code using that. Um, we want to teach you how, to, how things really work. And by coding and making your own applications, you get a deeper understanding of software and just a deeper appreciation for what programmers do every day to build software that you use. And we want you to express your creativity. I think that, at least for Harper students, because I'm a Harper student, we don't really get the chance to build things, and we kind of just sit there in lectures listening to the theory and never really learning how to apply it. And what we really want you to do here is to build things. And we want you to be creative and be able to showcase your ideas. And um, just to raise of hands, how many people here aren't CS majors? <coughs> wow. Awesome. I am not a CS major. You don't have to be one either. I learn how to code by myself. I, and when I tell you that I'm self-taught, it doesn't really mean I'm self-taught. It means I read a lot of books. Um, and the thing is, when you learn to code by yourself, it's really hard because you're by yourself. And there's no, really, there's no one really to help you out in, with problems. And that's why we wanted to do this. We wanted to make it easier for you to learn how to code and make a community here that creates hackers and people who create. Um, this is what I look like for the last month. I've been sitting at my computer learning how to code by myself, and it's been really hard. So that's why we're here to help you guys to learn how to code. Um, so this is how we work. We do workshops every Thursday at 8 p.m. They run for two hours, but it's not gonna be like uh, the lectures that you go to in class where you listen to a professor tell you what to do for an hour. I'll tell you what to do for 20 minutes. You spend the rest of the time building your website on your own, and we'll just walk around and help you. 
So we're doing project-based learning, which means you'll be building projects that help yourself. Our first project that we're gonna do is to make your own portfolio, and we have an awesome partner that's provided us free web hosting, so everybody here who shows up to lectures will get their own free hosted website. And we will, learning, we'll be learning, uh, server -side we'll be learning server-side development, which means we'll be building our own version of Twitter, which I'll show you later, which can be transformed into an engine for your own blog. Just like any other class, we do office hours, so each of us are gonna set aside a few hours every week, and you can come to us with any of your questions. And for those of you who think, if you look at the curriculum and think maybe it's a little too easy for you, we do additional workshops throughout the week with more advanced topics. And this is currently in beta, but if any of you think this is too easy and are really good at this stuff, we could really use your help. Um, so we're gonna try to assign mentors which are just people who are TA. Um, so if you think you know HTML, CSS better, and you think you can help out, uh, come to us after this, and we'll you know, assign you some students so that you can help in your free time. Right. And if you feel that you want extra help, um, also come to us and we can help hook you up with a mentor. Um, and if you can't make it every day at 8 p.m., we'll be recording all these lectures online, all of our materials are online, and the exercises are online, and we're actually recording this right now, um, so if you guys want to wait for the camera, you can do that. <laughs> so what exactly will you be learning? We'll be doing full stack web development. And what that means is that you're going to build a web application from top to bottom, setting up everything. Um, so as you can see here, a web application isn't just what you see. So what you see is the front end, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, literally in this picture. Um, so that's HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And the other side of it, which deals with all of the data and your, all your interactions with a web application, um, use server-side languages and databases and all this complex stuff. Um, so with front-end development, you'll be learning HTML, which is hypertext markup language. It describes the structure of a web page. Um, that's gonna be kind of boring, I'll admit. But CSS stands for uh, cascading style sheets, and that's what's ma what makes websites really, really nice looking. Um, I can show you some examples. So this is what a basic HTML website looks like. It's pretty much just plain text with uh, you know, headers and paragraphs, things that are emphasized more than others. And just by learning this on its own, well, it just looks like text. Um, but once you add CSS to it, you get websites that look like this. And that is just a layer over the HTML that styles the websites to make it look however we want it to look. So, that's pretty much what HTML, CSS are. Uh, JavaScript is the language of the web, which is a programming language that makes websites interactive. So if you go on google.com and you type in the search bar, when you see it auto-completed, that's what JavaScript is doing over there. And in that demo we just showed, we were checking every second by using JavaScript to request the server. So we'll also be learning back-end development. Um, we're going to be using Ruby, which is a really, really cool uh, programming language that makes it easy to read, <laughs> even if you're not a programmer. So if any of you guys have taken an intro to CS class, you've probably seen code that looks like this. Um, you know, most of you who haven't seen code that looks like this won't know what it does. Um, this is how you do it in Ruby. And any of you could probably tell me what this does. And this is, uh, this is an example I used if you were that class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be making our web applications using Ruby on Rails, which is a framework uh, written in Ruby that makes making web applications easier. It's what powers um, Hulu. It's also what powered Twitter when they first started. And uh, speaking of Twitter, I have another demo. So this is... Uh, Twitter client that I built in a few days using Ruby on Rails. Um, if you guys want to go on it and sign up, it's at tweethackview.herokuapp.com. Um, so I'll just run through it. I could just sign up like how you would do on Twitter. Sorry. 
And this is the kind of thing that hopefully if you stick with PacBU, you'll be able to build by the end of the semester. So here I could tweet. I could also follow other users. I've signed up for this like five times. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I see their tweets in my news feed. So if you guys want to check this out later, um, do that. Sign up for another Twitter, as if you don't have enough of those. Um, so basically, we want you to be able to bring your ideas to life. We want you to, if you ever wanted to redesign a website for your blog, if you ever wanted to create a website for someone else who needs it, like an organization, or if you just want to, if you thought of a software idea that you wanted to build, we want to be there to help you out if you wanted to. And I'm going to pass it over to Davix about Hackathon. So to continue where you left off, hackathons are a really great place to bring your ideas to life. And so I found a really nice definition of what hackathon is. You guys don't really know what it is. So hackathon events typically last several days where a large number of people meet to engage in co collaborative computer programming. So hackathons provide a really nice venue to actually um, express yourself and use creativity through the use of technology. Anyone ever heard of a hackathon? Just out of curiosity. So people with technical backgrounds come together, form teams around a problem or idea, and you don't necessarily have to come from, like you said, a CS background. So uh, the, my last hackathon that I went to was at MPAX, which is at uh, University of Michigan, but this time was hosted at Detroit. And my team actually consisted of one designer and one person did the back end and one person did the front end. And we pretty much, I'll show you later, we made a college social bucket list so that every college and university has its own bucket list, but right now it's at its uh, prototype stage, so you can actually have your own bucket list, and you can put items that you want to complete. And so, like I said, every university has its own bucket list, so like University, uh, Binghamton University, one item can be um, definitely attend one of uh, Professor Ryan Bond's lectures. So that can be on your bucket list too, and you can see how many people have actually done that item. Another thing that I did um, after was after hackathons, you actually demo your project. So this is where, if you have a really good business background or you really love presenting, this is where that team member comes really in hand. And so what I did was, I made it really relatable and I said, one of the bucket list items was go streaking across campus. I'm pretty sure a lot of people wouldn't go streaking across campus, but if you see that 500 people have actually gone streaking across campus, Maybe you want to be the 501 person to actually be a part of that. You never know. And then you can share photos of you go streaking, and then it becomes a really collaborative event. And, you know, I'm not saying I'm for streaking, but tell them about yeah, the prizes. So for hackathons, it's actually sponsored by a lot of companies. Right. So typical, typically, it would be large companies such as Apple, Google, um, Facebook, and smaller companies and startups such as Dropbox, LinkedIn, Twilio. Twilio. And so you get really nice shirts like the one he's wearing, American Apparel. Um, you also get um, a lot of free swag, which is what they advertise. So you can get like free Facebook um, backpacks, free whatever. And throughout the event, there's actually a lot of free food. So you can get really high on candy, coffee, whatever else you want to go. So, and cash prizes too. There's actually cash prizes. So if you, um, the hackathons, they actually differ in terms of how many people make the top whatever. So it can be top 10, top 7, top 15. And they pick the top three. And the top, uh, the first prize is actually, usually, sorry, $10,000. And you get a trip to the more regional hackathon events. The second prize is like $5,000. Third prize is $1,000. And there's actually smaller prizes. So like Facebook can have its own prize if you use a Facebook API. And they can give out more swag if you're like really, you know, Facebook advocate, or Twitter can be there, you can get Twitter uh, swag. So there's actually a lot of free stuff, and I actually recommend you going to hackathons. So to sum it all up at hackathons, people come together and use technology to transform ideas into reality. And so we're actually planning this semester to go to at least two hackathons, the first one being Penn Apps, and I think the third, uh, the second one being um, Hack Princeton. So if you have, if you want to actually visit these campuses, this is actually a good opportunity to do so. It's completely free. It's completely free. You, we actually have a coach bus coming down here. We go on and we actually get transported there. And so like, you can go, arrive at the event, you can have a good idea, and let's say you have three team members that say, oh, we, we got this covered. But usually in groups there's always one member that like, you know, lags behind. That person can actually help you 
get free stuff while everyone else does the work. And your team members will actually love that. Because like you're at, sometimes like the programmers are actually like really in their zone and they don't want to be bothered, but if you come back and you give them candy, they, they'll code even faster. Like, <laughs> um, so at least those are two hackathons that we're planning. If there's more, we'll actually go to those. Well, that's the reason why I love going to hackathons. One, it's a good networking event. You can actually have your resume there if you want, or they usually have you upload it. And so you can actually get recruited from them and present a nice hack, or you can just talk to them and have a more personal interaction. So like at Career Fairs here, the job internship fair, yeah. I think it's coming up next week. We actually don't get like companies like Google and Facebook and Apple, which is a shame, but if you go to these hackathon events, they're there. They want to meet you. Talk about the one we're hosting. So the one we're hosting is um, happening a week after spring break. It's going to be a 24-hour hackathon event. And I think it's going to take place in the uh, academic, academic day. day. Yeah. Um, so we're looking... 24 hours. 24 hours, 24 uh, hours 50 to 100 people. Uh, right. We're not sure yet. We're not sure, <laughs> but, details, but just expect there that. There will be free swag. There will be. In case you haven't heard of free swag. Yeah. Um, also, what I thought, I was, what I thought was really cool is that you could actually rent out all of Academic A, right? Free. Yeah, yeah. free. So we will have all of Academic A, so like not just a room. You guys can break up into groups, and we'll be in Academic A for 24 hours doing whatever we want. reaching out to a bunch of companies. Um, I don't have a list of prizes yet, but <coughs> all we have confirmed right now is most gift cards. Uh, <laughs> we also have free domain names, um, but expect to hear more about the contest in the future, and uh, hopefully we'll get some really cool prizes from awesome companies. Cool. Um, just to wrap this up, uh, we were going to have our first week meeting next week, but Next week, Alex O'Kanian, the co-founder of Twitter, not Twitter, Reddit, Reddit. Reddit sorry, the co-founder of Reddit, um, is coming to Binghamton. So there's an event in the Mandela Room, uh, Thursday, 7 through 9 p.m. Um, if you want a ticket, they're free. There's also priority seating for six bucks. Um, so go on that website. Uh, our first class is February 13th. It's going to be running from 8 to 10. Um, location to be announced. If you might not go until 10. Yeah, it might even end earlier, yeah. but it starts at 8. Uh, um, room to be announced. If you guys don't know our website, it's uh, hackvu.org. We'll post all of our information on there. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for coming. If you have any questions, just come to us.